I got this solar garden light at the dollar store a while ago. It's supposed to be for something like mounting it on a fence, has a solar cell on the top, and it has two LEDs in here on the bottom portion, and this diffuser. I want to take this apart, see how it works, have a look inside, and one of the reasons I bought this, because it's so large compared to a lot of the other ones where you just have a plastic stake in the ground and then a tiny bulb on top with the solar cell, which is smaller than this, and a single LED, there's not much space inside those. So I'm thinking with this, if I can figure out how this works and tap into its power source, put some electronics, maybe a Wi-Fi module, this might make an interesting garden sensor kind of interface. So it has an on-off switch, four screws holding the case together, two screws holding the battery compartment together. It has these two mounting keyholes, so if you put nails or screws into the fence or whatever, you can just sit this on there let it do its thing. So when it's powered up, when there's enough light hitting the solar cell, the LEDs are off, and when the solar cell is covered, the lights come on. This cover looks like it just slips right off, but there's really nothing to do in here. So what kind of battery is in here to start with? And in here, we have a double a NICAD 1.2 volt, 100 milliamp hours. So there's four more screws to see what's inside the whole thing. And it looks like there's a lot of potential space in here for some custom electronics. The battery itself will fit above this board. I could probably squeeze modules and things in there. So there's the battery going to the switch and the solar cell all coming down to this circuit board and the two LEDs here. So let's see what's on this driver board. With everything pulled apart, this is the front. I took out the board with the LED, so I have the solar cell here. It's hot glued in with two wires coming out. The circuit board is down here with the two LEDs on it. It was taken off from right here, and the LEDs go through here, coming out here. So this is the top of the unit. The sun charges the battery, and with the reflector, here's the light when the lights are turned on. The battery is wired in series with an on-off switch that has a little waterproof sort of covering on it, slide switch. So the switched battery positive terminal happens to have a black wire coming to the board. The negative battery terminal with a white wire goes straight to the board. And right now the lights are actually on because the solar cell is facing down. The solar cell itself receiving light or not acts as the on off switch. So if I bring the solar cell up toward facing light, when it sees daylight, the LEDs go off. When it sees darkness, they go on. We have two white LEDs, a chip, and this looks like a resistor, but it's an inductor. And as usual with these green or blue bodied components, I find it difficult to see the colors. With and without this times 10 magnifier, I saw different colors. My best guess at what those colors are, from left to right, brown, green, brown, silver. Without the magnifier, I, I was seeing brown, gray, red, gold, actually, and I don't know how it's coming out on camera right now. As far as I know, I'm not colorblind, but I, I just cannot reliably read these kind of resistors or inductors. I have no trouble with these kind of resistors. Brown, black, green, gold. 5% 1 meg. Why can't they all be like that? If those inductor colors are brown, green, brown, that should be 150, 150 microhenries. So I'm going to try to measure it with this component tester. I don't want to take it out of the board, so I'm going to try to clip test leads on. The battery is out of the solar light. So I have one side of the inductor going to this alligator clip into the tester. And I have a resistor here, I'm not using it, I'm just 
using the lead to go straight down to another terminal. I needed a tiny clip here, not an alligator clip, because there's not much exposed. And I just have a banana plug on the other side, so I have to hold this on and then turn on the device. So I think I'm ready to measure. It's supposed to be 150 micro, Henry. And it measured 130 micro, Henry, or 0.13 millihenry with a series resistance 3.7 ohms. And it did say a series resistance on that inductor, 3.7 ohms. So let me just do a little resistance measurement. And I'm getting 3.7 to 3.8 ohms across the inductor. So this little component tester always impresses me. I use this more than I would have thought. And this 4-pin chip, YX8018. So, flipping this board around back and forth to trace it out, I sketched out what the wiring on the circuit board looks like. We have the YX8018 chip here. On the leftmost pin, looking at the chip where the writing is on the face, it goes to the anode of two parallel white LEDs, and it also goes to the 130 to 150 microhenry inductor. The other side of the inductor goes to the battery plus terminal, which is wired as well with the solar cell plus terminal, and it goes to the rightmost pin on the chip. The second pin from the left connects to the battery minus terminal and the cathode of both paralleled LEDs. Then the third pin from the left just goes to the solar cell minus terminal. Looking up a data sheet for the YX8018 has been a little difficult, so Combining a couple of different sources, we have a 1.25 volt solar LED driver in a TO94 package from Shining IC. And here's a typical looking board with an LED, the chip, and the inductor. So it's a boost converter. They say here high efficiency 80 to 90 percent. You only need one inductor as an external component. It can run with low battery voltage, which is good for a single double A and the inductor controls the current. So down at the bottom here, there's a PDF link, some circuit applications. Ah, here's some inductor information. From a 1.25 volt battery, I guess, if you have a 150 microhenry inductor, you can get 10 milliamps. And as you decrease, you could get 15 milliamps with 82 microhenry. So LX would be the output, which goes to the inductor as well as the load. Two is ground. Three is control enable, I believe, which goes to the negative of the solar cell and is an enable or charge control. Pin four is VDD, solar cell positive electrode. Over at analog devices at analog.com, there's this little info page here about a gated oscillator IC for a solar powered garden light. The DC to DC boost LED driver IC has a built-in NMOS FET switch, increases the 1.2 volt battery voltage to the three volts for the LED. There's a block diagram of the chip with the gated oscillator, the output FET, a low voltage on the CE input gates the oscillator off, and a high voltage gates the oscillator on. Runs a couple hundred kilohertz, driving the open drain NMOS switch output on LX. Pulses the inductor to step up the voltage to drive the LED. But here's the interesting part. They use the internal ESD diode between the chip enable and ground right here to charge the NICAD battery from the solar panel. So the solar cell positive is connected to the battery positive in this example. And then through a diode junction here, the negative of the solar cell is connected to the negative of the battery and can charge it. And at the same time, with the solar cell connected to the chip enable, that enables and disables the LED voltage based on the presence or absence of light. There's an internal pull-up to the 1.25 VDD battery voltage on CE. So if the solar cell is dark and it's not generating anything, the pull-up enables the switcher and the LEDs come on. But if the solar cell is receiving light and generating enough current, it will override this pull-up and disable the switcher, turning the light off. So I have a scope probe with the ground lead on battery minus, and I'm probing the inductor where it meets these LEDs here at the output of this chip. So now we have a three volt output 
with a 40% duty at 213.7 kHz driving those two white LEDs. I don't have full sun available, so with a lamp nearby I have 1.2 volts out of the solar cell right now. 1.38 volts with an LED flashlight right on it. I plan to do future projects using this circuitry here, so on a week that we don't have rain forecast every day, I can actually go outside and do better measurements. One thing I can check right now, I don't need light to do this, when the solar cell is face down dark and the lights should be on, how much current does this circuit draw from the battery? So I turn the switch off because it's in series with the battery, and then if I just bridge those terminals with a current meter to complete the circuit, I should be able to measure the current. I'll put something somewhat reflective here so it's easier to see when the lights come on. 11 milliamps when the lights are both on. So that's how much current this thing will be drawing all through the evening when the sun goes down. And what I'm thinking is, if I can use this as a solar battery charger and I can take away these two LEDs, just use this board to do the charging, and then I use this battery to power something else, maybe with a step-up converter, depending how much idle current whatever I add is consuming, if it's really low, I'm hoping this will let me power up occasionally, do what I want to do, go back to sleep, and let me do some outdoor projects. So that's what's inside this solar garden light. I hope to have a whole series of project videos throughout the next couple of months, starting from this point as a potential power source.